Now, let's take an n bit adder and try to implement it using half adders and full adders. Uh, I'm going to take the example of a 5 bit adder. And let's just uh, do a numerical example. So we are adding um, all ones to perhaps um, this number. What's going to happen here is that in the first bit position, we're going to add 1 plus 1. This is going to give us 0 and 1. In the second bit position, we're going to add 1 plus 1 plus 1, giving us 1, 1. In the third bit position, we add to get 1 and 0. And then we'll continue adding until we get the final result. Obviously, the general case is that for n bit inputs, we have n plus 1 bits in the output. Some of the inputs might not need n plus 1 bits to store at the output, but we have to account for large input operands needing uh, more space at the output. So what are the building blocks we have used here? We have, for the first bit position, we have used the half adder because we added only two bits, accounting for A and B as the inputs of the half adder. For every bit position, from then on, we are using a full adder, where the inputs to the bit position are the A and B from the upper end, as well as a carry in coming from the previous bit position. So the general situation is we have an upper end A, uh, consisting of A note E1, A2, A3, A4, up to AN minus 1, and another upper end B naught, B1, B2, B3, and B4. And we are going to add the bit position, the first bit position, A0 plus B0, to produce some naught and a carry naught, a carry out naught, which is going to be a carry in to the next bit position, where it's going to be added, producing S1 and carry 1, and so on. Now, in general, we can assume that the first bit position is also going to have some carry in coming from the outside. This is, for example, the case where we use small adders, like 5-bit adders, to build larger adders. Imagine that you have to build a 20-bit adder using 5-bit adders. You will assume that there is a carry-in coming from an outside source, that outside source being the outside 5-bit adder in this case. So we're also going to assume that the first bit position is going to use a full adder rather than a half adder. Now, in the last bit position, we're going to add C3, A4, and B4 to produce some 4 and carry 4. Carry 4 is not going to be added to anything, but it's going to become part of the final output. Now, let's draw how this looks using full adders, and it actually follows um, directly. So there's nothing, uh, there are no tricks here, there's nothing special about it. We have the first full adder, full adder 0. This is adding bits A0 and B0 and uh, accepting a carry in from the outside to produce some naught and C0. C0 is going to be used as a carry in for the next bit position for full adder 1 where it will be combined with A1 and B1 to produce S1 and C1. This is going to go to full adder 2 where it's going to be combined with a2 and B2 to produce S2 and C2 and so on. So we will need two more full adders which add the upper ends, the bits from the upper ends together with the carry ends coming from the carry out positions of the previous bit positions. So this is going to be C3 S3 and S4. Now for the last, the very last full adder, its own carry out is also going to be part of the final result. And so adding two 5-bit numbers is generally going to produce a 6-bit number. For arithmetic circuits, what we care about the most is speed. We do care about area, we do, ca we do care about participation, but speed or delay is of the utmost importance. And in fact, what we care about the most is how the delay uh, behaves as the number of input bits increases. So if you have an n bit adder, how would it delay compare its delay compared to a 2n bit adder? 
for example. And more importantly, how would a multiplier behave? So we're going to look basically at adders most of the time and then at multipliers. And the reason we are going to focus so much on adders is that all other arithmetic is actually built using adders. Dividers are built using adders. Um, transcendental functions can be implemented using adders. And in fact, even multipliers are ultimately adders. So if, you, if we can build fast adders, we can build fast arithmetic in general. And the question again is not just to, to have a fast 5-bit adder. The question is how to have a fast 32-bit adder or fast 64-bit adder. Some adders have really good behavior uh, for small inputs, for a small number of inputs. But uh, if you increase the number of, uh, of bits in the inputs, the behavior becomes really bad. So. What we care about is how uh, delay scales as we increase the number of, in, uh, of input bits. Now, whenever we look at a circuit like this and we want to find delay, what we're going to do is we're going to assume there are registers on all the inputs and on all the outputs. And then we will try to find the critical path of the circuit. So what this means is that we are going to assume that the adder is input-output pipelined and is completely not internally pipelined, and then we will try to find the critical path of the circuit. So I'm going to draw um, crosses representing registers at all the inputs and at all the outputs. Afterwards, like from now on, for, for uh, you know, more complicated adders, I'm not even going to draw, draw these uh, crosses, and we're just going to assume that there are registers at the inputs and the outputs. So what we want to find now is the critical path, which means the longest delay between any input register and any output register. So what we have here is a 5-bit adder. So A is 5 bits, B is 5 bits, and S is, strictly speaking, 6 bits. And we want to know from the time that you provide A and B, to the time that you observe S, what is the delay? And so we're going to assume that A and B are provided at the same time, so that all the bits A0, B0 through A4, B4 are all available immediately at the beginning of operation. And the question is, when can you look at the sum word S, the six-bit sum word, and consider it correct, take it to be a correct output? Now, this means that we have to look at which output, which bit in the output S is ready the last. What is the longest delay between any of the inputs and any of the outputs? This is what we are generally going to do with any arithmetic circuit. And so, if you look at the first full adder, full adder naught, this full adder can start operation as soon as the... Uh, let's say the simulation starts or whatever. As soon as we start operation, this can start calculating. And so this sum, sum naught, is going to be ready after a time Ts. And this carry, C naught, is going to be ready after a time T carry, Tc. Ts and Tc can be estimated using um, CMOS gate delay, as we did in the previous video. So C naught is ready at Tc. When is S1 ready and when is C1 ready? Now, A1 and B1 are ready at time zero, but the full adder FA1 does not start calculation until it has all of its three inputs available. It also needs input C0 to be able to start calculating. So it will have to wait for C0 before it starts calculating. So C1 is only ready at T carry plus T carry, at 2 T carry. And S1 is only ready at T carry plus T sum, because we have to wait until C0 arrives, which happens after T carry, and then we can start calculating uh, in FA1, even though A1 and B1 are ready at time 0. Similarly, C2 is ready at 3 TC, and S2 is ready at TC at 2 TC plus T sum. Carry 3 is ready at 4 TC, and sum 3 is, carry, is ready at 3TC plus T sum. C4 is ready at 5TC. 
and S4 is ready as at 4TC plus T sum. So you have the outputs S0, S1, S2, S3, S4, and C4. Which of them is ready the last? And obviously S4 is ready the last. Now the question is always, is it S4 or C4? Because obviously S4 is ready later than S3, because its delay is obviously longer. But its delay is also longer than C4 because 4TC plus T sum is greater than 4TC plus TC. So S4 is going to be ready later than C4. And S4 is actually the last thing to be ready. And therefore, the delay of this six bit uh, of this five bit adder is actually 4TC plus T sum. And so the delay of the adder here is 4TC plus T sum. And if we generalize this for any n bit adder, it's obvious that the delay is going to be n minus 1 t carry plus t sum. So the 4 here is 5 minus 1 because we are taking uh, n minus 1 del uh, carry delays for the input carry of the last full adder to be ready, and then one final sum delay to prepare the final sum bit. So this adder, which is called the ripple carry adder, is the simplest adder we can ever design. And it's obvious that this is pretty simple because it mimics or it copies everything that we do in long addition. It doesn't do anything interesting or anything new. It just copies uh, long addition. And if we look at how its delay looks, its delay is actually uh, pretty good for a small input where n is small, but it starts to increase real fast and it increases linearly. So at n equals to 1, the delay of this adder is t sum. Because if n is equal to 1, then we're just using a single full adder and the delay of the full adder is obviously t sum. Full adder has two delays, t sum and t carry. Its critical, its critical path is going to be the t-sum, obviously. And then this increases linearly with n, and the slope here is t-carry. So even though t-sum might be larger than t-carry, t-carry is more important, because t-carry represents the slope of the uh, delay curve when drawn against the number of input bits n. And so for a very large number of input bits, which is the case in most modern processors which use wide buses, the carry delay is going to dominate uh, total delay because it represents the slope of the curve and, the, and, and thus will affect the total delay more than T sum, which sort of represents the intercept. So the main thing here is that we have linear delay. So the delay of this adder is order of n with the number of bits. And the main question is, how can we design faster adders? Adders whose delay, whose total delay decrease, increases slower than linear with the number of input bits. So this is what we'll be working with most of the time, how to design adders. They're not necessarily just fast, but whose scaling behavior is good, whose delay increases slowly as the buses increase in width.